Hi there, my name is Jonathan Terry. I'm with Team 15 with Ty Schreidiger and Alicia Cutts. And today I'm gonna to be presenting our second design project report on our product, Study Stand. Before I get into the material I have to offer today, I'm gonna to start off with a brief overview of what I'll be discussing. To start off, I'm gonna go over a review of our mission statement, our customer profile, and our identified customer needs. From there, I'm gonna move into the concept generation exercise, the gallery method, what we learned from that, and then moving into our final design, I'm gonna talk about the base design that we started off with, and then some of the modifications that we made along the way to end with the design that we have today. To begin our mission statement, Team 15 will provide a product that will improve the working environment of Virginia Tech students. So in direct relation to our peers, our team hopes to improve their ability to study, to learn, and stay organized in a rigorous class schedule at a prestigious university like Virginia Tech. In order to do that, our team decided the best way that we could help is to invent or improve upon current study stand designs to make something that follows our customer needs. Before I get into the customer needs, I'm gonna to talk to you about our customer profile. Our customer profile follows a student named Stephanie Kim. Stephanie's attributes include outgoing, she's studious, and she's very involved in her school and class. Her hobbies include watching TV shows and movies, reading books, and creative writing. She owns a laptop, books, she has a desk in her home, and several different school supplies. She does not own, however, a lap desk, an iPad, or an Apple Watch. Her frequent purchases include books, clothes, and school supplies. Lastly, her philosophy regarding school is she enjoys academic pressure. She believes that breeds ingenuity, and she also believes in having a very strong work-life balance. Like many of us, Stephanie Kim is indicative of a very common Virginia Tech student. She's involved in her class, she likes to learn, and she wants to know different ways that she can stay organized and continue getting the best learning experience possible. After we identified our customer profile, our team went out, talked to different peers, and we discussed what might be our customer needs. From these discussions, we drew upon five different distinct customer needs. And very much like this multi-tool here, our study stand, we decided, must be multi-purpose, collapsible, modular, easy to use, and durable. With these study stands in mind, we moved into the next phase of our product development concept generation. With those customer needs in mind, what our team did is we made this concept combination table right here. We started out with three sub-functions that all followed the top three members of our customer needs diagram. With these sub-functions in mind, we identified three to four solutions each that could be used to solve that distinct problem. <coughs> For instance, sub-function one, the study stand must be multi-purpose. To solve this, we integrated an adjustable cradle, a reclining factor to change the angle, and gave it an adjustable back. For sub-function two, it must be collapsible. Our solutions include having a folded back, a telescoping base, folding legs, or an overlapping hinge technique. For sub-function three, it must have add-ons. These add-ons could include magnets, clips, or pins. Once we identified these different solutions, each member of our team chose a unique route through the concept combination table to figure out what we wanted to draw to figure out a different solution. So we came back and each of us had drawn two solutions. We talked about what we implemented and what we can carry forward from this exercise. The concept design number one implements an adjustable cradle, folding legs and clips. The adjustable cradle could change the viewing angle of the study stand. So depending on if you're using a tablet or a book, it could shift the angle so that it's, the viewing is comfortable for the user. The folding legs make it collapsible and the clips could be used to implement different things like a light, a pencil holder, things like that. Concept number two implements an adjustable back, a folded back and pins. The pins in this scenario could hold both the tablet or book up as well as holding the pages of a book flat. The folded back, again, adjust the angle as to make it comfortable for the viewer to use. 
Concept number three, it will it can be a little, it has the ability to recline, has a folded back, and magnets. So as you know, many different products today, such as headphones, uh, watches, tablet, uh, pencils, have a magnet in them. So if anybody wanted to stick a magnetic piece on our study stand, they could and it would stay up there. Concept number four uses an adjustable cradle, a telescoping base that can expand to accommodate different sizes of books or tablets, and lastly clips to again hold pages. Concept number five uses reclining factor, overlapping hinges, and magnets. And then concept six is an adjustable cradle, a telescoping base, and clips. Once our team came back together, <coughs> we combined our ideas into a singular base design. This base design implements a central hinge, uses an integrated stand and grooves, and also has a shelf that can be used to hold up the book or tablet that the user is working with. Here we can see different views. Again, there's the stand there. And here you can see the integrated stand and the grooves that it'll fit into to adjust the angle of the study stand. The reason we chose this base design is because it served three unique functions. One, based on its design, it is naturally durable. Second, when making this in CAD, it's fairly simple. It's not overly complex. So any modifications that we needed to make to it along the way wouldn't be that hard to implement. Lastly, in terms of improving this after production, it could be done either on the user side or on the designer side. Um, but because, again, of its simple design, it wouldn't be hard to implement small improvements along the way. Using this base design, we finally moved into our final design. The final design took our base design, we talked to our different peers in our class, and we identified different modifications that we could make to improve the, the overall efficacy of our design. What we finished with was this. Very similar to the base design, this final design includes a larger shelf to hold a bigger range of tablets and books, deeper grooves so that the integrated stand has a minimal risk of slipping during class or wherever the study stand is being used, and finally integrated magnets here along the top that could hold, again hold tablet pens, watches, headphones, whatever the user might like. Again, here's our final design, this time in a more schematic form, and specifically points out the magnetic strip, the overlapping hinges here that improve both the structural integrity and the fluidity of the motion of the study stand, as well as exactly how the integrated stand and the deep grooves work together to create different angles for the user to implement. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. Again, my name is John Terry. I'm with Team 15. This has been Study Stand. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.